The Major League Cricket draft was a thrill for many, but few expressed more excitement on the draft day than Rusty Theron as he was selected by Texas in the very first round. And he is joining me here today. Rusty, thanks for joining me. It's great to have you. Thanks, Nate. Thanks for having me, man. Absolute pleasure. I've watched uh, a few of these episodes now, and I'm, I'm glad to finally make an appearance. So yeah, <laughs> good to be on board. Well, we've talked enough times that I had to think if I had if I've had you on here before, because we've mm-hmm. talked enough times. I've seen you. I've seen you enough times. We've talked. Yeah. I've interviewed you before for things. Yeah, I had to really think, oh, I haven't had Rusty on yet. And, you know, yeah. following the draft, you were you were definitely I, I was like, well, I got to get him on now, you know, going in the first yeah. round like that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a, I mean, it was a great occasion. And, uh, you know, I think a little bit surprised, as, as everyone do, but I think the stars aligned on that occasion, and here we are. So, you know, excited to get get on the show and, and have a little back and forth. Yeah, absolutely. So were were you – how surprised were you when you went in the first round? I think I think um, a lot of people were surprised, no offense to you, mm-hmm. but, you know, um, you are 37 years old. Mm-hmm. So I think that that factored into some people's surprise. But personally, it makes mm-hmm. a lot of sense. In my opinion, it makes an awful lot of sense because it's not a long tournament. So that kind of takes the age question out of it. And I'm not saying you're not fit. I know that you're fit. But but whenever anybody talks about age, that's what they're usually getting at. Oh, the fitness of the player. Is he going to be able to last the whole tournament? Well, it's a short tournament. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's kind of smart to go with experience in this case. Yeah, I don't think the age uh, thing was that bit of big a factor, although definitely worth a consideration. But I think you're absolutely spot on. It's quite a short tournament, just five group uh, stages or group stage games at the end of the day. Albeit it'll be in some trying conditions in in the heat of Texas and North Carolina in July. But as you say, five games not not really that insurmountable. Well, an obstacle, um, and I think just. The stars aligned in, in all honesty. I think you have to look at the composition of a team's makeup, what their squad's looking like in terms of the international players and what they're really looking for in a domestic players. And I think in that regard, I think it was clear that Team Texas wanted a, a dependable uh, domestic bowler. And I think the record that I come with, and as you mentioned, the experience sort of was a safe bet in that regard. And not to mention, you know, the Super Kings guys, you know, they like a bit of experience on their side. Bravo's in there and a lot of the... The older boys in the in the IPL franchise, so I think it was a natural fit at the end of the day. But yeah, of course, thrilled to have gone so early, and in particular with such a such a reputable franchise. Yeah, that's a great point there. They did kind of stay on brand there, going with experience, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, yeah, and for me, what a, what a thrill as well to get involved with that brand, um, particularly Stephen Fleming uh, being announced as head coach of that team, someone I've been an admirer of for ages uh you know so really looking forward to working with him and, and everybody involved in the organization yeah you know Stephen uh F- Fleming as you mentioned um uh, well I just I did watch CSK t- today I watched them win uh pretty mm-hmm. easily actually you know uh mm-hmm. thanks to some you know typical slower bowling in the middle middle uh overs that took mm-hmm. a whole bunch of wickets and you know it doesn't mm-hmm. it doesn't hurt when you score 220 to, st- to start yeah <laughs> the, yeah the, no the i think they i mean comfortably in the end but I, I i think you still want to win by a little more than that uh, uh if you put up 220 so i think a few things that can still be looked at and they will go back and look in, and try and improve upon uh, it looked like on the day the seamers had had a tough time and the spinners ended up being quite effective which is normally the case at that venue um but yeah still a good win and i was happy for the team to register their first one on the board i was watching as well and obviously a fan of the few players involved there as well yeah seeing uh fleming there you know it's kind of like you know how when you're a kid and you see your teacher at the grocery store and you and you've never seen him outside of school before and at first you're kind of like oh that's my teacher when when i saw him at the draft i thought he was you know an oil mogul or something you know what i mean (laughs) <laughs> yeah he's just he's got that boss persona about him i think you you would say uh i always liken him too i'm a big formula one fan myself and uh we watch uh we watch this weekend as well on the mercedes team boss is a guy called toto wolf and uh i obviously there's a likeness between them so for me that's my toto right there and, uh, <laughs> same sort of boss persona well i, I to, he looked like a texan to me from across the room i thought yeah. you know has the, i made a joke on twitter uh has there ever been a tech? Has there ever been a non-Texan who looks more Texan than uh, Stephen Fleming? And yeah. uh, I joked that he, he looks like he plays quarterback in cowboy boots. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he probably could be. He's a talented man. 
<laughs> Pro- probably, but yeah, he he has yeah. a little bit of Nolan Ryan to him, doesn't he? Yeah, no, for sure. Like I said, I'm a fan, and I'm really looking forward to uh, to spending a bit more time with him and, and and hopefully learning a thing or two, even at the ripe old age of 37. <laughs> <laughs> right, and you know the Texas team had an awful. They hadn't announced yet that they were going to be called the the Super Kings. I think it was kind of assumed everyone just assumed they would be the Super Kings, considering their yeah. ownership and their brand uh, yeah. recognition around the world. Um, mm-hmm. But they had quite an entourage with them. In fact, uh, probably, you know, the biggest entourage, well, definitely the biggest entourage there. I mean, it, it is, the draft did take place in Texas. There yeah. are Texans all over the place. You can round up yeah. some Texans and bring them in. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but there were yeah. some people, there were a lot, plenty of fans there, um, uh, owners yeah. and, and uh, adjacent people with cowboy hats on, cheerleaders. Yeah. They had their own camera crew filming things. It was yeah. really impressive to me. Yeah, no, it was a, I mean, it was a great occasion, even more so special to have been selected by them on the on the evening. Like you said, we basically had our own sort of bleachers there, and you can get a lot of Texans in Texas, but you can't get them all wearing pom poms and uh, <laughs> make, it a, make it a big noise necessarily. So, yeah, again, you know, when when my name got called and the reaction that went up, it really made it feel special and even well that much more special, and just being able to sort of interact with everybody in that moment and and really feeling like it's a uh, an achievement and that you're welcomed uh, as they say that that southern hospitality straight away uh, yeah so yeah a great experience yeah it definitely had a, a very um, local feel to it uh yeah. the the excitement there around that texas team and mm. you know guys drafted last so you snaked around and picked up calvin savage taking no yep. chances and knowing that that you were going to have to go have to wait all those picks to, to get a chance to get an all rounder, the all rounder mm-hmm. category was pretty is actually one of the thinner categories in, in pretty that thin, yeah. yeah. So it made a lot of sense to go after Calvin. Yeah, I think you know Corey Anderson would have been the the obvious choice. He had gone a little early, and kind of would have anticipated he would go quite early. I think he would have been high on the list. Uh, and I think as far as list of all rounders goes, Calvin was probably much the next in line. I would think. Um, you know, a few surprises down the down the draft. We could channel a little bit later, but you know, I think that was the obvious choice in in, in securing a good all round option, particularly a good bowling all rounder as well. So right. yeah, no surprise there for me. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he did have an excellent minor league cricket season last year. His yeah. first minor league cricket season. He didn't play in twenty twenty one, but he was absolutely fantastic last year, um, mm-hmm. ranking very high. Um, you yourself in 2021 were absolutely stellar and and in the short yeah. exhibition season uh yeah. it was it was fun watching you bowl i remember thinking how you were a cut above everybody else uh every game I appreciate that yeah yeah unfortunately i had a bit of limited uh sort of availability in 22 with my involvement with the u.s national team so it was you know which while it's you know always good representing the the usa and and trying to propel things forward there. Did miss out on some minor league action as well. And uh, I think I ended up playing about two or three games and, uh, you know, often under some heavy jet lag and a few, a few things going about. But uh, yeah, so this year I think schedule works out a little bit better and, and and looking forward to being a lot more involved in the in the season ahead. Now, in your role in the Bay Area, you, you coach and mentor a lot of youth, a lot of younger players. And I think... I think that that gets lost. The one thing that gets lost on people, I think, is how difficult it is to coach and at the same time keep yourself playing at a really high level Uh, because you're, you know, there's only 24 hours in a day. We all get the same amount of time. And anytime you put a second hat on, your time's cut in half, uh, you know, at each thing. Yeah. Well, I think I'm, you know, to agree fortunate in that sense with with age comes a few other things uh i don't think wisdom was one of them for me but uh, certainly <laughs> the ability to sort of fall back into things uh a little more easily so certainly you know certain aspects uh take a bit of a hit while others are focused on and you know for me the coaching aspect of things uh is sort of things that have taken a bit more of a focus in recent times uh particularly trying to prepare players for the combines and for those trials uh essentially uh leading up to the month of March. But yeah, I mean, I'm still able to get back into my site pretty quickly. You know, I think most guys would might have to spend a certain amount of time getting through the gears and getting to where they want to be. Whereas I'm I'm able to sort of get back to that 
home base if you like pretty pretty quickly if i give myself just a you know a couple of weeks to just more get the body into things i'll get into a rhythm pretty quickly and it's all pretty muscle memory at this point and from there it's just sort of small adjustments to to get the finer things in place i think it's always the small skills like nailing your yorkers and making sure that your your variations are coming out the way you want them and beyond that i think at a high level which would be uh, sort of a challenge going forward looking towards major league it's just really being engaged in a high end sort of battle if you like your contest with the batter you can have your skills especially in today's skill game where the where the players are so skillful you could often execute quite well but if you're not in the contest and reading the player and half a step ahead at least you're going to come out at the wrong side and that's where the game is really played so for me really it's getting involved in the contest really being engaged with the batter and and really I see what you're trying to do here and being that half step ahead that's really what gets you out on top at the end of the day and those are the things that that you can't really train for unless you're up against some quality opposition and constantly engaged in that contest. But beyond that, I think from the physical side, it's getting the body ready and then just getting back into the stride of things, which for me, you know, not not my first rodeo, so to speak. I can get there a little bit quicker than most guys. So yeah, while coaching does take a bit out of you, and I think there's a physical strain to it, um, you know, facilitating, coordinating, and, you know, also participating in, in, in these sessions, it's more of a physical load, and that does start to take a, tra- a strain. Had many an Epsom salt bath over the last <laughs> year or so, uh, but other than that, you know, it's it's also rewarding to see people progress and and ultimately do well. So certainly worth it at the end of the day. And some of the young guys that you've coached um, and mentored in in the last couple of years actually went in the U twenty three round, correct? Correct. Yeah, a few guys are on uh, gone there, and a few guys may have gone even higher. I think Ali Sheikh was one that's picked up in the sixth round, and deservedly so. He had a fantastic combines or a championship champions open uh, as they call it and um yeah citasia another one obviously with the with the super kings now uh, one of my sort of favorite young prospects uh sanjay krishnamurti another one that i work with here in the bay area who i think is a, a very talented young cricketer and, and just a good athlete all around and a solid guy i mean i've no doubt that he will get places in the in the world of cricket someday and, and his journey's just started in that regard so yeah a lot of young talented guys out there a uh, few that I had sort of the the pleasure of working with a, a few years back when they were you know playing for the U.S. under 19 side and we had a few camps here in the Bay Area and in Texas as well and good to see those guys you know maturing now and, and going through the ranks and being provided with an opportunity to take their game further more than anything really I think often right. the end of the road is U.S. under 19 and you know if you're not selected from there then 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 what you know at least now we have pathways like the minor league uh, and the the major league as as a as an end goal if you like uh, as a professional in this country and i think without those pathways what are you really aspiring towards what are you investing your time in as a player but beyond just the love of the game but at some point there's a there's a clock on that and you got to call it a day and and look at real life you know what am i going to do for a living and i think with the advent of minor league as a pathway and major league now as a tangible end goal you really can be motivated to pursue the game of cricket in this country yeah yeah absolutely i i remember a couple of years back when minor league exhibition started and then the first year of, of minor league i was quite concerned about how the how well the teams would do with playing their u19 and u21s and it became the focus of a lot of my content a lot of the articles i was writing for emerging cricket um you know, on my emerging on my weekly emerging cricket show. Um, sorry, on my weekly minor league cricket show during the season, we always do a uh, emerging player of the week, and it's a U twenty one or or U nineteen player. We we like to bring attention to that, and and the whole reason behind that is because you want to connect the chain. You want to make sure that the people can go from here to here, and that they have those incremental steps along the way. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and it's something that we've always struggled with in the USA is is what to do what do the guys do after U19? How do they get to the national team? And it's, it's always been a missing link and minor league provides that link in, in so many ways. Um, And, and so it's, it's really exciting to me to see two years ago, me being concerned and a lot of people being concerned. It wasn't just me. A lot of guys, people, people were hoping that minor league would do what it was supposed to do. And, Mm -hmm. You know, being concerned about guys like Ali Sheikh, is Ali Sheikh going to get enough opportunities in Dallas? Is, you know, is Sanjay Krishnamurthy, is if he has a bad day, are they, is, it, uh, is he going to still get chances the next game? Sai, mm-hmm. Sai Mukamala, is he going to open batting for his team in New Jersey? You know, 
uh, all these questions were answered the last couple of years. And now these guys were drafted in the 23 round and in, in uh, Ali Sheikh's case um, earlier. Well, Saite Jamukamala somehow lingered around and was picked in, in by Texas in the 20, U23 round. And he's going on this past week after the draft, a week after being drafted, he's going on to score, I think, one of the best centuries in – you know, recent memory for, for USA cricket. I mean, it's maybe as far as I've been following the team, one of the very best centuries in a big game in the biggest chase USA's ever pulled off uh, when they're fighting to advance here in the uh, world cup qualifier playoff, you know, they've pretty much clinched ODI status again. And now they're fighting for one of the first two spots down there. And, and thanks in large part to Simon Kamala. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, for me, he's been one of the, like I mentioned earlier, one of the more exciting young players in the country from so the earliest opportunity I had to see those U19s coming through. And I think everybody who has seen a bit of him has seen that as well. You know, just being involved with him in a recent series against uh, Nepal and uh, the UAE in, down in, in Houston uh, June last year, I think we were all rooting for him. We know the talent and the capability that's there. I think as any young um player coming through the system here, playing on largely artificial wickets. There's some technical things that he needed to go and work on. And I think you can see some of that work already coming through. I think he was fortunate to be a part of a, a training camp in Delhi uh, not too long ago with uh, some some world-class coaches as in. From all reports, he really responded well to, to that experience there and came back a different player. You know, And I think just technically, I would think the ability has always been there for me. And I think right. he'll only go from strength to the strength uh, as he achieves things like he has, as you mentioned earlier, you know, being an instrumental part in pulling off a, a big victory and particularly in a big chase, that does a lot for a young player, you know, and you want to see that in young guys because by no means is the world of sport restricted to any age, uh, as, I, as I like to say, you know, you, you don't have to be a senior player to do to make the important plays. In fact, I'd love to see the youngest guys do it and take that responsibility on. And I think that's just the way that people... We go about it nowadays and young young players especially there's no reason to believe that you can't be as good and better than anyone else in that team from day one and I, and I think that's how everybody approaches it and I think are well served to do so so certainly like I said I think a milestone achievement for Sai uh, just recently and, I, and I'd love to see him sort of take the opportunities that lie ahead of him now being exposed to the environments that he will be exposed to now at, through the major league and working with people like Stephen Fleming and the experienced players that are on hand, uh, some of the internationals that'll be in that squad. And 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 I think he'll just he'll just go from stride to stride really and onwards and upwards from here on. So I'm looking really looking forward to watching that journey unfold. We had seven players in the draft overall taken uh that were under the age of 20, 23 years old. Uh, and, and we still have guys left over who 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 could have easily been taken and we wouldn't have batted an eye. We, you know, it would have made perfect sense. You know, Vasil Vaghella, uh, mm -hmm. Abram Balasetti, um, yeah. Yasser. So yeah. there's there's plenty of good young talent in the USA. And, you know, the yeah. original plan with minor league cricket and major league cricket, uh, the original plan is shaping up really well, if you ask me. That plan was to bring players over from abroad which which they've done and um have those players feature in the minor league along with locals and along with the U21s and the U19s help raise the standard of the game around the country which has has happened these young guys that we just talked about they'll all take their place they'll be the 17 year olds today who are very very good will be the dominant 27 year olds in 10 years and, you know, the 19-year-olds will be 29 in 10 years, and they'll be the dominant players in the USA. And they're already keeping up. They're already, they're already staying right there toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot of the best players in the, in, in the, in the country. And that's, yeah. to me, that's, that spells success. Yeah, and I think, I mean, you know, it was never going to be feasible to continually bring in players from all over the world uh, just as a continual process to uh, bring domestic cricket up here. What hopefully the injection of the professionals that we have brought over have done his has had an impact on these young players and and sort of accelerated or hopefully played a big part in in them getting to that next level. Ultimately, yeah. it is going to have to be those guys that carry the game forward. Hopefully, with a few things learned from 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 the senior pros, if you like, that have that have come over. But like I said, those guys are going to have their time 
and a next generation will have to come in and, and really carry USA cricket forward. It's always good to have some com healthy competition and a different perspective. So, you know, maybe not particularly or especially the end of the road in terms of some expertise coming in from, from elsewhere and for those who want to pursue the opportunity because I do think, you know, it does play a massive part in a young player's development to hear from all from all different parts of the world and, ex and different sorts of experiences. I know I certainly benefited from myself as a, as a young man getting to play with some professionals, you know, uh, and just the, the general standard of play, really. Uh, I, I mean, I was used to playing with uh, adults as a kid, and I think for a lot of these young players that have now played through minor league, played senior cricket, essentially, those are the things that really take you to another step above uh, your peers, if you like. So I think, right. you know, as you rightly say, these guys are showing a lot of talent and, abil and ability. That was never in doubt, but it's really honing that cricket brain and learning the finer details of where the game is really played and won and lost at the end of the day that is going to move the needle really in terms of what that ability is able to translate into results and performances. Right, and I would say that we're ahead of the curve as far as development goes right now. Compared to how I would have thought we'd have been three years ago, we have so many young players in the conversation uh, for, for Major League Cricket already. That's mm -hmm. super exciting to me. I mean, we have young guys like uh, Akalish Badagam who could rightly just play in, play in all five minor league – I'm sorry, he could play in all five Major League games and nobody would, would think it was out of place, you know, and he's a mm -hmm. youngster. And, you know, mm -hmm. same thing Same thing goes with Cy. You know, Cy, obviously, right now they're playing ODI, and that's a different format than, than T20. But And, you know, ODI does suit Cy's natural game really, really well, and he's really proved mm -hmm. that. But mm -hmm. but you can't, you, you know, it's it's still fantastic that, that minor league is here. It, it's still such a, such a massive part of the fabric of our cricket community at this point. And I look forward to this season tremendously. Yeah, uh, myself as well. I think we've we've got a few dynamics that have that'll be uh, shifting as well, and and making it quite interesting to see in some domestic uh, wild cards and some uh, let's transferability across the the the, the landscape. So we need to see what moves happen across there. We've also got the introduction of hybrid wickets all across the wicket uh, all across right. the country. So that'll be great to see for everybody as the game keeps moving forward in the country. And now with a few people being drafted, obviously it comes a. Uh, Great responsibility. I think there'll be a lot of eyes on people who got drafted high, got drafted low, or whatever it might be, and see how those performances stack up relative to how the market essentially has valued them. You know, so you know, there's lots to look forward to and look out for in the season up ahead. And I think everybody's pretty excited to to get going. Oh yeah, no doubt. I I just went to Church Street Park the other day to check out the progress on the uh, renovations there. Uh, it looks good. They they've already poured some some uh, cement. They built uh, some stairs on the hill. You see the support that they've uh, poured already for the um, for the stands on the west mm -hmm. side of the ground. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's 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 coming along quite well. You know, mm -hmm. it's filling my mind with all kinds of great images of the of the future. <laughs> like yeah. yeah, I love I love that ground so much. So so it's it's nice to yeah, it's a beautiful venue and like. At the end of the day, as long as you can see the game keep moving forward and progressing uh, in this country, which again, like I said, things like the minor league and the major league itself do play a massive part in that. And uh, like I, as a as a young, throwing my mind back a long way now as a young player, it really is those those markers essentially, if you like, that remind you that you're on track. You know, like I've yeah. made the U13 team now, the under 15s, under 17s. What's next? I'm in the national academy. Okay, I'm in the under 19 team. Now what? I'm in the you know what I mean? And there, there needs to be those markers along the way to let you know that you're going where you want to go. Right. Uh, and like I said, they're missing for a long way now. And again, minor league for young players working in the training groups here in the Bay Area and, and also looking for prospective talent, as you always have to do. Um, young bowlers especially. And I think yeah. that's another facet where we, we probably need to turn our, our attentions to is really having effective scouting programs and making sure that we're able to identify the best talent out there. Uh is going to be important, uh, as you say, in bringing through those those young players. But yeah, having those markers and minor league being another one of those. Like I said, for me in the Bay Area, I'm constantly looking for talent, and I, you know, having the ability to say to somebody, "Hey, I think you've got something there," and like work hard enough, and you can get to that next step. You know, that next step might be minor league for you now. After that, it might be a professional training group with all of our best, you know, professionals. And then from there on, you get you have eyeballs on you, and you've got people seeing your ability, and you're able to measure yourself up to those 
those players that are considered to be the best players in your region and see really where you stack up. Now you're on your way to a real goal and you're measuring up to those players and you think, hey, I can make it here, you know, which these are really the steps that you need to put in place to, to motivate young players to, to make something and give it a proper go. So, Rusty, going back to the draft, um, you said earlier that there were a couple of surprises for you. I think everybody saw a few surprises in the draft. Um, what were some for you? What what really stood out for you as a surprise? Yeah, I think there would have been a, a few surprises. A few guys uh, maybe going a little higher than people thought, <laughs> but <laughs> going a little lower than they would have hoped and many would have thought as well. I think uh, Team Texas ourselves got some really good steals out there. Like you mentioned earlier, Saitasia pretty much in the last round. He's a quality young player and no doubt that he's got a lot to offer still and hopefully benefits a lot from the experience, as I mentioned. You've got guys like Cody Chetty, who's probably one of the most experienced uh, players in the country. Picked up in the seventh round, I believe, also by Team Texas. I think we've got some value deals there. Uh, Sami Aslam, another international quality batter, I think picked up in the first round just in our side alone. I think one or two other ones that stood for me was probably someone like a Smith Patel, who I know is a quality player. I think he ended up going in the seventh or eighth round himself as well. And right. I sort of had him picked for at least a third or fourth round pick at the least because I, I genuinely think he's a quality player. Yeah, uh, I, agree. I agree with you. Mohamed yeah. Mohsen probably didn't do himself... Uh, much justice at the combine. It's not playing much. I think he was suffering with a with a with a back uh, niggle or something at the time. But he was somebody that I thought would actually be a really good cricketer, a, a, a genuinely good leg spinner, and somebody that can hit the ball, uh, right. which is also quite a a, a niche category I, I find in terms of domestic players, genuine hitters and all rounders, as we mentioned earlier. So you know, I think those are two guys that, well, one not getting picked up at all was a bit of a surprise, but also at the same time, not really because it didn't show much of himself at the Combines. Uh, Smith Patel is just a good player in my books and unfortunately didn't really get anywhere. Dave White was another one. I think someone who has been a consistent performer through minor league. I think he's up there in the top five, four or five run scorers yeah. and had a stellar season last season, especially. And is a good player. I think he ended up going about the seventh round as well. You know, so, you know, a few surprises for me and a few guys would be quite disappointed in there. Um, but what that means at the end of the day is some really good steals for the teams who got them in the, in those late rounds. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, David White, I think he's one of only a handful of guys with a thousand runs um, mm -hmm. in the two seasons. He had a great mm -hmm. year this past year. Uh, one mm -hmm. of the top five or six performers in the entire league uh, mm -hmm. as far as the advanced stat metrics went. Also, mm. incredibly strong guy. I mean, he he really yeah. hammers the like like he miss hits mm -hmm. the ball and it clears the boundary t by mm -hmm. ten yards. You know, it's yeah, uh, and a technically good player as well, and somebody who's played at a high level. So for me, and like I kind of look at a measurement of going into this sort of competition is you you know some people's ceilings and you don't know others that haven't really been tested to that level. And and you know a few of these guys have been playing at that level, or have played at that level, and you kind of know what they're capable of and hopefully right. can fit back into that relatively easy. And I think, you know, Dave is one of those guys that, you know, probably to an extent he's played franchise cricket, T20 cricket, he's played South Africa A. Um, you know, can count himself a little bit unlucky. Uh, I think he had a decent innings um, at the combines as well and showed that power and that ability. Um, but yeah, I say it's uh, it's not always a, a fair outcome, but at least you know guys have the opportunity now to make an impression with their teams, and hopefully you know there's always next year and 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 bigger and better things for those guys. Right, right. It's uh, yeah. let's see how that goes. I, I yeah, I was a little bit surprised by Mosa not being picked. I was definitely surprised by Smith Patel going as late mm -hmm. as he did. Um, yeah. But really, you know, a lot of keepers were selected early. There was one uh, international keeper announced uh, in Quinton de So mm -hmm. that's, you know, really only five slots where you're going to take a keeper. Uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, so the fact that he went so late, that makes sense, really. Um, but but by his it, based on his talent alone, yeah, he he. I think I have him pegged as you know, th you know, third or fourth rounder or so. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. Just, yeah, and like I said, at the end of the day, as you alluded to as well, like it, it depends on what the squad's composition looking like. Uh, you know, there might be a squad that's gone particularly heavy with batters on their on their roster, international players wise, and in need of some domestic bowlers. Some vice versa. Others may have keepers already in their ranks, and site might be really desperate for a keeper, and right. they came out specifically to get one of those. And then you're going to go in early and go get that guy 
before sure. it's gone. You know, so sure. there's a lot of dominoes to fall, and exactly how they fall, you know, is is not always up to you or exactly a reflection of your ability as a player. Uh, and we see this in IPL drafts. I mean, in many instances, of there were players that were literally going to be picked the next round, and another team selects another player, and they just don't get into getting picked up at all. You yeah, know, it just it just changes the dynamic so quickly. So you know, it's, it's a bit harsh to assume your your value as a player uh, relative to where you got picked up in the draft because there's so many factors at play. Agreed. But certainly, you know, some people would be very happy with where it ended up for them. And like I said, there'd be probably a few that are quite disappointed as well. But like I said, the door is in front of most of those guys now. And I think once you're involved with any of these franchises, really, they can open a number of doors for you and and you have the ability to make an impression on some really influential people. And and that in itself is valuable. Right. It's it's not unlike football, the NFL, where we'll have a period of several years where like a left tackle, that'll be the high, you know, there was a time when the left tackle was the highest paid position on the field. Mm -hmm. And it was because that was just what the game demanded at that particular time. There weren't too many of them available. Uh, Mm -hmm. It seems every team needed to have a good one because you were going to have a pass rush, a heavy pass rush from the quarterback's blind side. So, Mm -hmm. you know, like you said in the draft, it's, it's, it's really fascinating how, how that happens. One player's taken, it changes the, the course of everything else. And all of a sudden, mm-hmm. a guy, like you said, you had pegged in the third round, didn't even get drafted, or he got drafted in the eighth round or something. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the, it, and also, that was really well il- illustrated with uh, Shehan Jayasuriya, who went as the 12th overall pick. And mm-hmm. many of us had him pegged as a top three to five pick, as a first rounder for sure. Mm-hmm. most people did but because of the scarcity of the all-rounders uh, and the fast bowlers uh mm-hmm. throughout the domestic uh you know setup that that opening that top order batter the value of it dropped a little bit uh yeah. just because there's we have a lot more top order batters than we do fast bowlers do, and yeah. all-rounders yeah no definitely and i think if you look at that you know those early picks a lot of them are Specialist positions, you know, Andres being one of them. I think that, as you mentioned, the all-rounders, again, being quite low. Hamid was probably the number one all-rounder in the country, for my money anyway. Deservedly win in the first round. Andres, uh, you know, for my money, again, probably the best we could keep a batter we have in the country. Went first round. Uh, all-rounders, again, being quite scarce. Corey going quite early, uh, or first round as well. So, yeah, at the end of the day, it depends what you're looking for as a as a team and, you know, and that just that dynamic keeps changes as everybody sort of gets their picks in. And, you know, I might have had player X as my number one option. But as soon as he went off the off the table, you you can't you, you start scattering, start sort of scurrying a little bit for a position. You know, you might have thought you had a chance to get a guy in round four and now suddenly one of those options are gone. And you think, OK, well, if somebody picks my option number two, then I'm really in trouble here. So instead of picking him around later, I pick him around earlier and everybody sort of shifts down the line as a result of it so yeah a lot of things at play but yeah that's what i guess that what makes it interesting and and exciting at the end of the day oh absolutely yeah you know it was a little bit shocking to me the most surprising thing was how fast the draft went went by yeah you know teams didn't really use their their uh their space of time all the way yeah you know within a minute everybody knew what they, what they who yeah they i mean playing. it shows that they they would have done their preparation you know and sure. know, know what they're looking for First of right. all, and I think that's easy to do when you have an idea of what your your core group's going to look like in terms of your international players that you may have signed or looking to sign or feel confident about signing a board, and then you build your team around that. So, you know, I think some some categories were limited, as you say, in terms of the fast bowlers and the all rounders. So, if that's what you were looking for, you were pretty sh- pretty clear on who you were going to get pretty quickly, you know, <laughs> and. Uh, didn't need too much time to think about it. So, yeah, not surprised that it went pretty pretty quickly in that regard. I think the, the guys would have done their homework and uh, pretty clear on what they needed. We were talking earlier about the Team Texas, about how they had this entourage at the draft, how mm. you know exciting they made the draft, how much more exciting they made the draft. Mm. And of course, when you got selected, it was like, you know, it really felt like a real draft. You know, this yeah. here we are at a yeah. draft. That's what it felt yeah. like when you got picked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, yeah, uh, I mean, you should be excited. I think it's obviously a great occasion, and why not? I mean, it's uh, 
some 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 it's a really spectacular moment so i think you should enjoy it it should be a little hype about it and like you say the the, the hometown faithful really brought that yeah absolutely mm-hmm. now they also showed you some hospitality over the, in the that night and in, in the in the next day mm-hmm. when you guys took a trip out to dallas which is four hours by car i i believe from houston yeah but you didn't or take about a 30 minutes by private jet as it turned out <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah like you say that southern hospitality really uh kicked in pretty quickly uh you know i think just from uh the, the conversations after the draft and the warm welcome from everybody expressed uh on the night uh and then being promptly informed that there will be a car outside your hotel bright and early and they'll be picking you up and escorting you onto the runway for a private jet to dallas in the morning i think it escalated pretty quickly and uh, i think uh, <laughs> i don't think anybody could complain about it in all honesty yeah it was a it's a great way to to start that relationship that's a true texas flex right there you know yeah do it again uh, <laughs> <laughs> it just just uh you know showing off try got to got to go to the to the nth degree all the time you yeah. know it's like uh you got you it's like a episode of the old show dallas right there you got a whole weekend of that yeah well i mean you know they say everything is bigger in texas and that is certainly a welcome to the big time uh <laughs> sort of flex right there as you as you mentioned so yeah it was great I don't, I don't know how many other sort of uh players or teams were able to have that sort of experience but i can uh show you everybody involved uh was absolutely thrilled and yeah it's just a great way to start things off yeah, we saw Lahiru, Amin and I saw Lahiru at the airport the next mm-hmm. day because we, we both mm-hmm. flew that night back to, we all three of us flew on the same plane back to North Carolina. And so mm-hmm. we were talking to Lahiru, he, his, you know, he's already got a big smile. His smile was 50% bigger. <laughs> and and he was telling us about that. And I just felt bad for him. He's about to ride on this, on this plane, you know, uh, after having ridden on a private pl- <laughs> plane a private jet so uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was like, yeah oh, no, I mean they could have sent the jet over to north carolina i don't see why not <laughs> but uh, no i mean you know what a great experience at the end of the day i don't know how many people have the opportunity to, to jump on a private jet and uh, i doubt you know many of many of our boys would have had that previously so again just a, just a great experience and uh hopefully a few more to come fingers crossed yeah, yeah. <laughs> great <laughs> Well, Rusty, it's as always, it's great to chat with you, you know, not just because you and I are both gingers and we, we yeah, just... represent, I shouldn't be so shy. <laughs> Take the hat off. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got just representing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Not just yeah. for that reason, but because, you know, I do enjoy your insight. You, you have a lot of insight on in the, into the game. It's uh, I always come away with uh, from conversations with you having learned something. Oh, appreciate that. That's very kind of you. Always a pleasure speaking to you as well. And, uh, yeah, look forward to some more collaborations down the road. Right. Yeah. For those yeah. who don't know, check out <laughs> yeah. Rusty. Please Instagram. like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> we we collaborated on a uh, on a post for him on the on the morning of the draft where yeah. you were. So you were amped up all day, by the way. Yeah, and I mean, you call it a post, I call it a work of art, a masterpiece. Some would even <laughs> say, but <laughs> yeah, no, I think some of our fighter work, but. Uh, yeah, I really appreciated your help on that. I uh, had a good time doing it as as with this conversation as well. So thanks for having me on board. Yeah, no problem, Rusty. Always good to talk to you. All right, buddy. Take care.